A very warm welcome to the fourth film in our Building Services series. In it, we discuss the principles involved in supplying water, electricity and heat to buildings. The supply of water, electricity and heat to buildings follows certain fixed and universal principles. Residential buildings have a moderate level of building services systems. They need water, heat and electricity to be brought in and wastewater to be taken away. For energy reasons, apartment blocks are sometimes provided with fresh air by mechanical ventilation systems rather than simply by opening a window. These systems extract used air and vent it to the outside. Homes also require simple ICT systems and so a low voltage power supply for telephone, data, internet, intercom systems, etc. Water and air both need to be disposed of once they've been used. As soon as water leaves a drinking water supply pipe, it is used and so becomes wastewater. It goes down the plug hole into the wastewater system and then out of the building into the drains. Used air, that is air that has been breathed in and out again, can be discharged to the outside via open windows or extracted by an exhaust air unit and vented to the outside. Heat and electricity are supplied as energy which is then consumed and so does not need to be disposed of. Heat is transported in the form of hot water to radiators or panel systems, such as underfloor heating for example, where it's given off into the air in the building. Because this air is cooled by transmission and infiltration heat loss through the building envelope, a constant supply of heat energy is required. Electrical energy is used by a wide variety of devices including lights, fridges, hair dryers, mobile phone batteries and many others. Water, heat, electricity and air are all brought into buildings on the same principle. They are generated or supplied by an external plant or within the building. From there, they are distributed throughout the building floor by floor. The distribution network ends at the consumer, which may be a water tap, a radiator, an air vent or an electric socket, for example. Let's take a closer look at the three stages of this process. External plants include waterworks, electricity and combined heat and power stations and substations that generate or supply water, heat or electricity for a large area. They supply water, electricity or heat to a small-scale transfer station in the building, like the district heating substation in our Leipzig Biomass Research Centre that you can see on the right-hand photograph here. Heat and air can also be produced inside a building. On the left, you can see the ventilation plant in the same research centre. Air is introduced from the outside, conditioned over a huge surface and then distributed throughout the building. Water, electricity and heat are distributed and removed in cables and pipes that are sometimes grouped together in cable trays or pipe runs. The size of the cables or pipes depends on the medium. Water pipes are comparatively thin because water is distributed under pressure. Wastewater pipes are thicker to allow wastewater to flow away freely without blockages. Heating pipes contain warm water and are also relatively thin. Ventilation ducts, on the other hand, can be enormous because of the large volumes of air they have to carry. Electrical cables are thin, but there are many of them, often grouped together in cable trays. We have already discussed the different types of consumers. They can have a major influence on the atmosphere of a space. The washrooms in our Leipzig Sports Hall have a quiet, calm feel, but their look is nevertheless determined by the wash basins with their taps and waste outlets, the radiators, the ceiling light and the ventilation ducts. In our workshop in Zwankau, we wanted to create an atmosphere that was not dominated by technology. It contains no sanitary wear and we fitted underfloor heating instead of radiators, desk lamps rather than ceiling lighting and windows rather than mechanical ventilation. Summary The supply of water, electricity and heat into buildings follows certain fixed universal principles. Residential buildings have a moderate level of building services systems. Water, heat, electricity and air are all brought into buildings on the same principle. Heat and electricity are supplied as energy, which is then consumed and so does not need to be disposed of. Water, electricity and heat are generated or supplied by an external plant or within the building. They are then distributed and removed in cables and pipes that are sometimes grouped together in cable trays or pipe runs. The size of the cable or pipe depends on the medium involved. Our Building Services series continues with film number 5 in which we examine how building services are integrated into the architecture of a building.